Mr. Popsit here. The most common question I get asked is what sunblock should I use? I've had 15 years to evaluate that question and here's the answer. Isden. I-S-D-I-N, link below in description, 10% off for the first purchase. Why is it the best? Medical grade, 100% mineral ultralight emulsion melts into your skin. Their scientists micronize zinc oxide so you literally can't see it on your skin. 50 SPF made for daily use on the face, decolletage, and hands. Coenzyme Q10 antioxidants and DNA repair zones that reduce inflammation and actually repair UV light damage. Available in tinted, non-tinted, and a powder. My wife loves the tinted so much she stopped using foundation. Only available online or in a doctor's office and this link only works in the United States. Literally the best sunblock I've ever put on my skin. Thanks for popping by. Okay guys, Mr. Pops it here. You can see here, if I bring one up here, it's not, you don't see a whole lot until you kind of pull the skin down and you see those better. Side lighting we can see as well. Um, Steatosystoma multiplex. And we have multiple patients with this. And a lot of them do come in um, from seeing us on YouTube, which I think is great because I'm, I'm happy to help them. Not a lot of people know about these, one, and two, even know how to treat them or treat them correctly. And everybody's a little different, so there is de different techniques. And you can see with the side lighting, you know, she's going to end up having probably two to 400, a lot of small ones, but I concentrate on the bigger ones first especially ones that are kind of in the central area there um, on the mid chest and young women. So we can kind of start clearing out those bumps. So from above, when you're lit from above, like um, in pictures and stuff, you don't see them as much. So we're going to see how easily um, these come out for her as far as the sacks go. I'm going to do a, a little marking on them with some ink so I can cluster them and then do a little shot to numb so we can do a little pokes on them. She doesn't feel much. So we're going to get her prepped and ready and then I'll be right back. And do little blabs, little pinches, you're gonna feel. This is nothing, huh? Mm -mm. I don't see a lot of dark pigment now with these. Sometimes we'll see blackheads or um, even the, like the vellus hair cysts that are clusters, sometimes a little dark hairs. These are all looking like they're going to be kind of more creamy steatos or butter cysts as they call them. And we'll likely use the 11 blade if you have that open. Do you see one dark one right here? I'm going to see what's in there. Look at that. Now just let me know what you feel. I am going to start with this little dark one right here. Yeah, there it was. So this is like a little follicular cyst right there. That was one of the few dark ones, darker ones that I did see. Sometimes we can get right under that with the cotton tip applicators and roll that out. Good. So, you did have one dark one. Oh, yay. Yeah. <laughs> Do a little poke here. There we go. That is your run of the mill steatosystema. <laughs> We're used to seeing a lot of those. Like the creamy ones? Yeah. Butter. You can wipe there. Thank you. I kind of come at a couple different angles there. If I'm pushing too hard, let me know. Okay. And I try to see if I can get some of the sac to start to come out. To begin with, I kind of go through and poke and drain, and then we'll see if any sacs kind of come to the surface. Okay. I'm going to poke a couple of these. That's good. That one's under pressure. Already starting to come out there. I can't wait to get out. So that one, the sack looks like it's beside it. There it is. Good, good. I know it's a sensitive area to push on. I don't see a lot of hairs in there. I'm not seeing very many hairs, which is good. 
So just straight kind of butter. So I saw on this one right here, I think it's right below, right there. Yep. So close, a millimeter off, and you can see the difference. So that's good. That one was more dry, you can see. That's good. There's actually a pretty decent amount in these. They didn't look super big to begin with, but they have quite a bit in them. Just a little air there. Sometimes when you really get down to the base, you'll start to see a little nub coming out there. It's kind of all silver, I think. Okay. Going to the bathroom. Yeah, that's okay. Pretty sure we have them, because I don't think I used them. Yeah. Pain-wise, not too bad here. You're not feeling much? Not a thing. Good, good. That one had quite a bit in it. So the goal with minimizing scarring here is, is the very tip of an 11 blade is only one to two millimeter poke. And that will basically not leave a scar hardly at all. That was a good size one there. Look at that, they're like twinsies right <laughs> beside each other and one was full butter and the other was paste. And they were literally almost touching. So that just goes to show you how different they can be. Interesting. Just for like the first couple minutes and then you can do the rest. I want to see that. I almost see a little sack there. So that is interesting. That is a cluster of the hairs that are in there at the bottom a lot of times. I don't know if that comes across with the lighting, but. That's a lot of little vellus hairs right there. Usually there's a sack not far behind. There we go. And that's coming out. I look like little mini calamari. Mm. <laughs> there we go. So that was a sack with a lot of little hairs in it. And we kind of go through and see if they're by the surface, we can start pulling some of those out. Some will be right there. Others are deeper in there. It'll cause a bigger scar to get down to them. So I usually just leave them. If you're somebody who refills quickly, and some people do, um, then we take a little more time, go a little bit bigger to get to sacks. Because we don't want to go through this and then have it refill right away. But your sacks seem to be pretty superficial, which is good. There we go. See how big that one was? And the big debate online is, do you take the sack? Do you not? Do you have to? You don't have to. If I can, I do. I think it's better to get them out when you can, but it's a slippery slope when we're dealing with permanent scars and leaving something that you see more than you even saw these little cysts. So, we leave you know dark brown spots or big scars or keloiding because we really dug deep we don't want that oh, it's still ready to go
pain level not bad, right? I don't feel anything. Good. Try to minimize as much pain as we can. Fellas hairs. Well, that sack is pretty sturdy, actually, I can feel. Big cluster of hairs right there with it. They don't come out easily. I'm going to go to the next one. And we kind of sputtered a little, huh? <laughs> Come right there. A little scar tissue on that one. Mm -hmm. There's the pocket there. I see some other removals you had, and then it looks like maybe a little cyst that was in there. This feels a little more firm, but we still got them. thing I like about a finger pad squeeze, I can kind of come at these different angles and kind of just shift a little where it's a little more focused with the cotton tip applicators kind of right up under it. I can kind of roll the fingertips a little better, which I like. But I do both. Do this one. Another coupling there of one butter and one paste. Little tender there or not bad? Mm -hmm. Good. These were a little bit bigger, kind of deeper in the skin there. see when they're blowing bubbles that means I've kind of evacuated the pocket and when I let go it sucks air in. This can be interesting. Okay. Through the first couple now I'm going to try and just see if there's any sacks in those little ones. This is her first round, so I don't go, you know, I want to see how she heals. Does she get dark brown spots? Does she start to keloid with even minimal trauma? And that'll tell us when we go forward how kind of rough we can be with the areas, how deep we want to go, how big of an opening we may make to get some of the sacs if they refill quickly. And yeah, these ones are close there. But sometimes if you pinch a little, it'll bring it to the surface. Let's see if we can get a couple like that. And it just made such small holes, it's hard to get the tip of that in there. Is it already on the ground day that says next? So. <laughs> I got a hold of one. If you don't get it after a couple tries, I usually go to the next. Let's see, rolled out Gallus hairs. There you go. She 
There's that one right beside it. Let me get there. This looks like we did four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's not twenty. Go poke, sorry. Okay. If I did twenty one, somebody will tell me. <laughs> it was actually twenty one. He can't count. <laughs> that does happen. It's kind of funny. Even if you kind of rip part of the sack out and we're getting little bits of the vellus hairs that are attached, that's usually enough disruption to it, it won't refill easily. You can see these long strands. They're like fibers almost and just tiny little hairs clustered together. Interesting. Interesting to me, at least. I do have people saying, why do you keep showing the hairs? I could care less. That's a, big, that's a common comment. <laughs> there we go. So right after the hairs, there is the sack. So I'm trying to go through on some of the ones that we already drained and just see if we can get any hairs out or uh, sacks out. sack there just a couple more and we pull the skin here you can see even with my side light there it's a little pooched up from the lido but that was her main cluster she has a lot of little ones and after we do a couple sessions we kind of get to the medium and smaller ones they always start with the ones that you see the most Now you will see some people just cut three or four millimeters um, and the sack comes out way easier, but you're trading off uh, cause cosmetic um, viewing of it in a bigger scar. So I try to split the difference with a one to two millimeter cut that isn't gonna hardly leave a scar at all. Try to wiggle it out of that if I can. There's one there, we didn't get on one. Right here, a little pinch, sorry. Look at that, it was hiding in plain view. Try to get away with it. <laughs> nice. Let's see if there's a sack in that one. Sure is. Very thin walled sacks, not like an epidermal inclusion cyst. It's commonly a pretty sturdy sack. That's good. Now we got parts of that one out with the hairs. Almost done. We did a pretty good job here. And just see about a sack on that one. Yeah, I think these are deeper down on the sternum. This area tends mm -hmm. to be a little deeper. I do see one more I'm gonna get for you right there. 
one of the bigger ones right here a little pinch some bellus hairs on that one good we did a little bit over 20 your main clusters here we're gonna get that cleaned up um, and we'll come up here so that was a good session um, we got a, a lot of the bigger ones in that area and it was a really good example of the creamier ones lots of clustered little hairs or strands of hairs I always got a spot right here enough for my light <laughs> And then uh, we did, we were able to get a couple of the sacks through just that one to two millimeter hole that I make. So these take, you know, people have hundreds of them. It's sessions of a couple dozen each time. Um, we go through, we'll numb, make a little cut, and we kind of move from area to area once we get the bigger nodules out. I also like to see if it's our first round, does she indent? Some people indent quite a bit. You might have seen on other channels, one in particular on the neck, that was it like, looks like scooped out cups when you remove some of the bigger ones. Um, leaving some of the sack in there or part of it um, and just draining it will usually leave it flat. Some people have had over two, three years out, they have not refilled. Others refill in three to six months. So depending on what type of patient, how quick the refill is, we kind of gauge how deep, how big of a cut we want to make and if they're getting hyperpigmentation or not. So I'm glad you found us online. Thanks to her for sharing and uh, thanks for popping by.